subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Ninja Selling Podcast. He's Garrett. I'm Matt. And as always, guys, we're so excited to have you here. If you're brand new to the podcast, welcome. Oh my gosh, we are so excited to have you here. And uh, we'd love to know how you got here. If you're brand new, go to Facebook and search for the Ninja Selling Podcast. Join our Facebook group. It's over 15,000 people and drop a post saying, hey, this is how I got introduced to the podcast because we would love to know and we'd love to acknowledge you as well. So please do that. And we're so excited that you're a part of our community. And if you want to learn anything about Ninja Selling, head over to ninjaselling.com. You can learn about coaching. You can hit the Ninja Coaching button there at the top and learn about where Garrett and I spend most of our time. And now let's dive into today's episode. Garrett, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, sir. How are you today? I'm great, man. I'm great. I'm pumped up. I got a lot of caffeine flowing through me today. So I don't. We got some fun topics on the table. This is great. I don't know how in the world at five or six something now, I don't know how I made it to this point without caffeine in my system. I am running on uh, electrolyte water. And it, by the way, hydration is a good thing too, man. I mean, <laughs> We can go down a whole path. Yeah. Oh. And we will in other things, other little projects that we have coming soon for everybody too, which is really exciting. These are things that we get to talk about in that venue. So stay Easter tuned eggs. to that as Easter well. Eggs. Well, yeah. yeah. Easter eggs. That's kind of funny because Easter just happened when this goes live. But yeah. Well done, Matt. <laughs> anyway, digressed. Let's jump into today. Yeah. And the this topic of, and I I think you wrote it on there. I don't know. I it, did. It, yeah, it was your topic. But if I read it word for word, because I absolutely love what you wrote down here, which is mediocrity is pretty darn comfortable. And this topic, when you wrote this down, got my attention because I was like, oh my gosh, that is so unbelievably true. Like in our world to be mediocre really is a low stress environment. It is. <laughs> well, you know, and this came about because, I mean, there is two parts to this, I think. And one is just how we live in society today. Yeah. And the other is how we live as realtors today as well. Right. And from a societal standpoint, it's like, being mediocre means you got a flat screen TV on the wall. You have a thousand dollar iPhone. You probably got, you know, a thousand dollar laptop. You're connected to the internet. Like, and you're like, I'm good. You got clothes to wear. Like, I mean, it's okay. There might be some stresses that we have about, oh, I got to pay this or pay that. But like, for the most part, like being and and I firmly believe mediocre is a subjective term for each and every individual. Oh yeah. Right. But like, it's comfortable. And from a real estate profession standpoint, like we can do business pretty virtually up until like showing properties and like physically being at listings. But like the technology that we have in this business, we get paid pretty well to do the job, which is a very important job, by the way. I'm not diminishing how much we get paid. I'm just saying we do get paid well and we earn it. But like to be kind of like to make some money and to live life like it's it's pretty good particularly here in the u.s too man i mean like we gotta at least ex like express some gratitude for being able to do this business here in north america or really wherever you guys are selling real estate like you gotta listen to this podcast yeah probably on your thousand dollar phone <laughs> like, <laughs> well and i think in this term of like you know the mediocrity is pretty darn comfortable i think it's easy to and this is where it comes to me matt it's like it's easy to get into a life where you Rinse and repeat. Yeah. You know, you you wake up in the morning, you go to your job, you do your job, you come home, you go to bed, you do it all over again. And there might be some pieces in there. You might, you know, manage kids at some point in there. For sure. You might figure out what you're going to make for dinner somewhere in there. And that's really kind of what you do. And it's like when you go back at the stats, and I don't have them on me, but the average person and how many books they read a year. Like you start to you know, look at that and say, okay, so the amount of people that are not necessarily, once they get out of school, are not really growing anymore. They're just kind of going through the motions of life. And a lot of people do that all the way to the point of when they're like, I think I'm going to retire. And they either hopefully have saved up enough, they have a nice pension from their job, and they're like, all right, we're good. And we kind of live out through that time. 
doesn't cause a whole lot of stress. It's a very safe day to day to day kind of environment. And the reason we wanted to talk about this thing, the reason we wanted to put this out here is, is that I, one thing I love is we get to work around a lot of high growth individuals. People that are not looking at being mediocre, they are looking at stepping out of the box and pushing. And there's a little stress involved with that, or sometimes a lot of stress involved in that, you know, saying, you know, I'm not going to just be comfortable with the day to day. I'm not going to be comfortable with just how this looks in front of me right now. I'm not just going to be okay with the quality of, of how I'm kind of, you know, doing things right now. There's another level and I want to go there and I want to find it and I want to create it and I want to make it. And I think this is where we wanted to address this is that I think some people look at it and just go like, oh, it's a slam dunk. It's easy. You just grow and you grow and you grow and you just and you watch these people and we don't see what's really going on the inside. There's a lot of work and a lot of energy going in and a lot of creativity. And uh, that me mediocre does not hold a place in there, but it also is it's work. It's work and there's stress involved. Yeah. And that's where I think we need to like kind of open that box up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, we, we expect that, okay, I want to achieve more and maintain this level of comfort. And so reversing the phrase comfortability lives in mediocrity. If we look at it that way, we say, okay, well, if then I want to push beyond this, then there needs to be some level of discomfort or just acknowledge that there will be some level of discomfort. And that is a very wide net to cast on what that could be. It could be mental. It could be physical. It could just be uh, a cognitive dissonance of just like, Ooh, this is feeling uncomfortable when it's not necessarily changing our time schedule and things like this. And so when you say put in the work to move beyond it, we really have to take a moment and say, well, what work do I need to do to get beyond my version of mediocrity mm -hmm. to get to the goals that I want to do? And we see this a lot when people set big goals in real estate, right? If I think back to business planning, which by the way, we just wrapped up Q1. So if you have not looked at your business plan that you created to see what's like coming up, like today is that day for you to pull it out and look at, oh, did I do my Q1 tasks and what do I have for my Q2 tasks, let's take a look at that. And that's part of it, right? Because maybe it's like, hey, business is kind of going okay. I feel good. Pull out that business plan. Did you have a massive goal set on there? And are you sitting right now saying, well, but the cash flow is all right. Oh, gosh. But you set that goal, right? So don't get comfortable in what you're experiencing now. Look at the action plan you've written out there for yourself and ask yourself, what am I doing this week to move myself towards that, even if it might be a little bit uncomfortable in order to move myself or just stay kind of, even if it's one step above that version that I have defined for myself as mediocre, right? Well, Matt, I love, I love that you brought up the business plan right now, because what, what you're trying to find there is you're trying to pull out the plan to sit back and say, okay, do the pictures match? And when the pictures don't match, that's where it becomes stressful. And that's where you get to make a choice. One way to reduce the stress is to say, but I'm okay. I'm good. This is good. I'm making good money, living the life I want to have. That will reduce the stress by actually changing the goal or letting the goal go away. That's a way to fix it. The other way actually causes some stress is to say, what do I need to be doing different today to make the outcome that I want to achieve? And that all of a sudden changes the game a little bit. <laughs> and this is where you get to, you, all of us get to make the decision. And a lot of the best growth that people have comes out of the uncomfortable environments. These comfortable environments of saying, I'm okay. If you were to look further down, well, give yourself another quarter and you've already taken that energy away from yourself of, you know, it's okay. The chances of you being off by the next quarter, like really off, maybe to a place that's not okay, is really high compared to, okay, we're doing well, we still need to make some changes, but we're improving. That's the, that path that you took. When the crossroads came up and you said, am I okay with where I'm at and do I want better? Or I'm okay with where I'm at right now and I'm just gonna kind of keep going down this path. I guarantee you, give yourself another quarter, you're gonna be farther off track than you wanted to be. Man, what a good point of saying like, it's okay until it's not. Yep. And 
I'm thinking about this too. It's like mediocrity is comfortable until it's not too, right? It's not a long-term thing because, it, and I think also we have to understand what is that comfort really? Because if you know it's your mediocre state, then there's probably something in the back of your head that is not causing you to be comfortable. It's actually creating some sort of discomfort. So it's in that phase where you try to justify it, right? By saying, yeah, it's okay. Like, I'm good with this. And it's like, we, you know, I, I got this going and, and I'm and here, by the way, it's okay if you're saying, hey, I'm handling this pretty well. Great to acknowledge if you're handling the current situations well. And it's also okay if you're not hitting the huge goal that you set. The question is, is what are you doing? What are the actions look like? What is what does it look like when you analyze, am I running towards discomfort? Am I embracing challenge or am I running away from it? And if you if we're running away from it and just chasing comfort, like if we're just like, I just got to get that comfy blanket and sit on the couch and just hope everything's going to be okay. Just, just wrap myself in comfort for the time being. You may end up in this situation where you're like, oh, that blanket was just pulled away from me without me wanting it to be. And now I got to get up and go. Imagine if I did that sooner. So I'm really, I'm really curious, Matt, as I'm sitting here thinking about kind of the path that we're going down right now. And I have this feeling there's a lot of people out there that are like, if they had hackles, if they had, they would be putting them up a little bit, kind of going like, okay, hold on guys. Sure. Yeah. And, the, and the reason for it is, and the more I was thinking about this is me, the word mediocre is an ugly word. There's a lot of energy attached to it. There's a lot of uh, nobody wants to be mediocre. You know, when you think about it, we 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 talk about it in mastery, uh, removing of media mediocrity around you. Yeah, and so it's fun. I I was just like I was like I wonder how much negative connotation is actually attached to this word. So I, I I looked it up just so we could get a real definition of what mediocre. It's a very simple definition. Look at you, the wizard with the fingertips while we're recording today. This is, that's a new, a new twist. I love it. And there's certain points, Matt, you got to step your game up. And you decided you were getting too comfortable in your own mediocrity. And you're like, I need to be able to. I'm going to look up a definition today. <laughs> this is where I'm, I'm, I'm raising the bars, what I'm doing. Mediocre. It's an adjective of only moderate quality. Not very good. That's it. That's the crazy definition of that word. It's not terribly negative. It's not like you're garbage. It's not that you're going to fail at life. It's not that it's just, just a moderate quality. It's just not very good. Like it's just, but it, it is, it's not failing. It's not falling apart. It's not broken. It's just mediocre. And I think that that's the, the place that you need to look at in there's places of all of our lives. And I'm not, immune to this that I could look at and say, okay, in that aspect of my life, am I, am I raising the bar? Am I pushing it? Or am I just kind of being mediocre right now? And I have projects in my life right now that I'm working on that I could easily go, Garrett, you are giving a mediocre amount of energy towards achieving that project and getting that project done. If you were to look at my kitchen right now, people might say, oh, you finally stepped out of mediocrity around your kitchen and you're finally putting some energy into it making it come together. So I think I want to take the the ugliness out of the word. I don't want you to be okay with it, but I don't want you to become defensive over it. And I think people, as we're talking about this, could become defensive over the word. And that's not how we want you to be thinking about it or looking at it. It's just a place of saying, how can I be better? Is it worth it? And do I have reasons to want to grow and be better around this? And um, if you're not, just know that that's a mediocre approach if you're just kind of just hanging on and letting it be. Well, and that's why I think this is, this can be very subjective, right? I mean, you brought up mastery, right? Remove everything in your environment that it reminds you of being average, right? Yep. Or that encourages your averageness or whatever. And like, that's going to be a subjective, like, how do you pick and choose what are the things in my environment, right? And I agree, it's not a bad thing. It just is. And I think anytime you look at how you want to rank yourself on your journey, it just is. That's just where you are and how you're looking at it. It's not good or bad. Because ultimately, there's nothing that we can do about where we are today. Because in a second, this moment is going to be gone, right? In fact, that moment we just talked about already is. 
right? So oh, now we're getting deep, Matt. Keep going. <laughs> we are. So then it comes. So then it comes down to okay, how do I want to perform from here? How do I want to show up for myself from here? And do I want to continue to embrace certain comforts that I know maybe aren't serving me the way that I want? Because I think we can stress ourselves out by applying this to way too many things and be like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, my office is a mess. My car's a mess. My mind is a mess. I'm not going to bed on time. You know, I'm not eating right. Uh, or, oh gosh, like I didn't write that email perfectly. And it's like, okay, hold on, slow down a second, right? We're not talking about going and addressing every single thing in your life. I mean, if you do feel that way, maybe you should take a structured approach at analyzing all those things, but one thing at a time. Right. Yep. And saying, okay, how do I first just acknowledge the comfort that I have that I don't really want to have forever? Like, do is this the comfort that I am okay with five years, 10 years from now? Right. When we do business planning, that's something that we talk to people about is saying, great. If you had this year again, next year, the year after, and the year after, are you okay with that? And a lot of times that gets people to go, well, no. Now, and I will also acknowledge that we're in the unique position of getting to talk to people who, want to do something different. They either want to increase their income or they want to completely change the way that they're doing business to achieve more time in life. Because of what we get, what we do with coaching people, we get the joy of being able to work with people who are going towards that. And I think that's why a lot of the people who are listening here today, they listen to podcasts because like there's, yeah. there's, you've already acknowledged it. So if there is cognitive dissonance going in your head, have that conversation because you're not here to be mediocre and average. No one listens to a podcast that's about being a better real estate agent to say, yeah, I just, I'm cool with the way that I am. And I just want to like continue just being average, right? Well, and I think also another thing that, that's kind of coming to my mind as we're talking about this is that we also need to understand that there's a lot of players out here that are listening to this. There's a lot of growth mindset people that plateaus are okay. And I think we need to just acknowledge that there's a difference of a plateau in, in this idea of holding on to mediocrity. And as you grow, there are certain places that you get to that you're like, okay, I want to hold here for a second. That, that has been brought up to a level that I'm happy with. We're going to hold that for a little bit. Could it be better? Totally could be better. There's places we can grow to. But right now we're going to hold and we're going to work on some other things. And I think that that's, that's that mindset of, as you, Matt, you said, I could address everything right now in my life that I want to be better. But the reality is, is that we want to be working on specific things that are going to improve us in all aspects. But sometimes it's best to give those things specific time. I'm a prime example of, again, remodeling a kitchen over 10 years, slowly, like just kind of like, I know it's funny, we've been in the, um, the demolition uh, part of it for probably 10 years is what we've been in. It's just like, things just keep breaking and you're like, oh, that's too bad. Like, okay, we need to fix that at some point in time, but we're, you know, we'll remodel the whole kitchen at some point. Now we're at a place of like, okay, that now is getting full attention. That gets day-to-day -day attention right now. How are we fixing this? What are we doing? What are we working on it? And there will be a point that this kitchen is going to be done. I hope. <laughs> uh, there'll be a place and this kitchen is going to be done. And when this kitchen's done, that would be the plateau for it. It's going to come up. It's going to plateau. I'm not going to need to touch it. I'm not going to need to work on it anymore. Are there things we could probably do better with it at that point in time? But there'll be a place that I get to and go, that's good enough. That fits with my picture. That works for me. And there might be somebody that would walk into it at that point in time and go like, oh my gosh, this is the level these guys have been living at. We need to raise the bar to a different level and improve it upon that. I don't know how in the world they were okay with that. Everybody's levels are different. This is your subjective side of this matter. Like everybody's different. This is a total thing for you to look at in your own life and just raise the bar. And then I want people to be okay that there's times that it's okay to plateau and say, okay, that's been, bar's been raised. Let's let it run there for a little bit. We'll come back around and revisit it and see if we want to raise the bar down the road. What else do we want to be working on? Because there is only so much time in the day. There's so many, only so many hours we can give. And unless you're ready to hire people to help you fix all this stuff and make it all happen, if you're doing it all on your own, you only got so much to work with. And I think that gets into the thought of stability, right? Yep. When we say mediocrity is pretty darn comfortable, what we're saying is to be average is still good. I mean, in terms of what it's going to feel like. Yep. Being stable, having stability at a point that is above average is different than like, oh my gosh, I'm being mediocre. I, I believe, right? Because yep. 
our levels and interpretations of our own mediocrity can certainly change. But you also know when you're like, hey, I'm just doing really so stability at a level above mediocrity can become comfortable as well. However, I also feel like any level where you're like, hey, this is really nice and I'm above, I'm just, even if it's just a little bit above what I believe is average and, and what is mediocre, there's always something constantly working, right? Like if you're in living a healthy lifestyle, like you're always working to eat healthy. You're always making sure you're getting enough water. If you're at that level of your business, you're always showing up for your calls. Maybe it's easier because you've built the discipline around it, but you're still doing the work, right? Yeah. And so stability. So to kind of pull this together, I, I'm hearing you talk about the plateau, maybe think of this, like what, what I think what we want to try to strive for is acknowledge when we're in that comfortable state of mediocrity and say, hey, how do I drive myself towards stability? How do I drive myself towards the place where I know I want to be and I can maintain that with a certain level of discipline that makes it more comfortable than I know it's going to be right now as I go and embark on that. Well, and I think that, you know, the, and the point of the podcast and where you're kind of going, Matt, is like, this is your opportunity to look around and say, where, where are the areas in my life that I'm just overly comfortable right now? Just really comfortable because it's just, it just works. And I think that's sometimes one of those areas that can be like, would I like to see better results out of that? Even though it's just really comfortable right now. It's just a good thing to kind of like get into. And, you know, you might find yourself in the gym and you kind of go do the same workout all the time, every single time, same weight, same everything. You get in there, you do the thing, you get on that, you get on the bike, you get on the treadmill, you go over there on the row machine. Then it's like, okay, am I really pushing it or am I just doing the same activity over and over and over and over again, which is great because I'm getting into the gym. It's not that I'm like, let myself fall apart, but it's this like, So what if I just changed up my protein shake that I had in the morning before I go to the gym to get maybe some different results? What if I started going to the sauna afterwards to let my muscles, you know, recoup a little bit different or do something a little bit differently? What if I did go in and raise the weight on every single exercise that I do this next week? Am I going to hurt? Am I going to be sore? Is it going to be uncomfortable? Yes, it's not going to be comfortable. But at some point, you're going to, everything's going to adjust and you will get stronger and you will improve. As we talked about with the plateau, you're going to find a place there when that new weight is now the new norm for you. Just look around and let's see the places that maybe you've been plateaued and you've been too comfortable for too long and go like, maybe it's time to raise the bar a little bit for myself. Yeah. Opportunity sits within you and you got to analyze it for yourself. It definitely does. All right, man. I love that. Yeah, there it is. And so use this time to just analyze and use your own subjective reasoning on kind of where you're at and soak it in on that level and make the call and pull out that business plan. Guys, it's Q2. If you haven't, take a look at it and uh, plan out your quarter here because you got some great things coming to you. Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, it's one thing to make the business plan. It's another thing to come back and review it. I have had personal firsthand experience of people that actually one, make a business plan. They're typically light years ahead of a lot of others out there. But then when you start reviewing it regularly, and I try to get people to review it almost weekly is what I try to do. But uh, even once a quarter, just to ground yourself, ask yourself on this trip and this journey that you're on, am I still on track? Um, Have I detoured? Are we broken down? What do we need to do to get ourselves on track to get us to the destination that we want to go to? Quarterly is a great time to do it. If you're not doing it any other time, quarterly is your time to sit down and do it. Otherwise, yeah, you made a business plan. Great point. So, all right, everybody. Well, with that being said, thanks for joining us. As always, uh, we will be back soon. If you want to check out more about Ninja Selling, go to ninjaselling.com. If you want to figure out more about coaching, and if you think it's time to have a coach potentially in your life to help you get to where you want to go, uh, we have an amazing group of coaches. I've handpicked them all myself, trained all of them, and uh, they're incredible. And they uh, they know Ninja inside and out, and they can get you to where you want to be. If you want to go find a great group of people of like-minded realtors, go on the Facebook page, Ninja Selling Podcast Community. Amazed at that. I, I've been seeing comments in there lately where people have just been saying, like, how in the world is this group so positive and so giving? And so on point when it comes to anybody asking for help and everybody's willing to give. And I just want to say, all we did was we, we made the pool. You guys all jumped in. Uh, <laughs> that, that's what, <laughs> that's what it, that group is. And I want to just say thank you to all of you for being who you are and what you bring to that group. Cause um, 
We have to monitor it every once in a while. We have to be the lifeguards and pull certain people out that are causing trouble. But uh, for the most part, you guys all do a great job. We appreciate you. Thanks for making it easy on us. And uh, we'll be back soon. Thanks, everyone. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the ninjasellingpodcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.